Hello everyone, I hope you're taking it easy and your day has been great thus far. For this video we'll be going through unboxing and review of Starscream. And this particular version of Starscream is out of the Transformers G1 Retro line uh, per the original 1986 movie and was released, at least this version anyway, was released this year. So continuing on with the G1 Retro subseries that uh, I've been going through since Hound and Hot Rod. Uh, next up the list is Starscream, which is why we're here. After that will be Thunder Cracker, that part of the release wave. And then after that, I believe, will be Kickback and Perceptor. So, with a bit of luck, this retro series will continue on. And I will try and actually do one of these once a week. Anyway front of the box for Starscream with some very nice animation style art both of his robot mode and his alt mode unfortunately the figure will not look like this but it is okay the artwork is still the artwork itself is still nice to look at and that's also back dropped uh, on the um, Autobot City it is a shame that the figure won't look like that, but eh. Uh, top of the box. So we do have some quick steps on the transformation process from Starscream's alt mode to robot mode. He was, and still is, a little bit of a weird parts warmer. I mean, you don't have to, but it does make things a little bit easier sometimes. Although, to be honest, I think I used to transform him back in the day uh, as one whole figure. So this will be fun. I can confirm that you did own Starscream back in the day, so this is actually a bit of a um, refresher to the collection. Back of the box. Nice shot of Starscream in both his robot mode and his alt mode. And we do have the nice little technical specs here at the bottom left of the Air Commander himself. Definitely nice to have this. Very cool. Also digging the look of Starscream. And I think some of the stuff isn't stickers anymore. Apparently. Time will tell. Okay, that was the box. Time to get Starscream out. Um, it'll obviously be his main body and there'll be a heap of detachable and reattachable items which I'm not even going to try counting until I open the box. And with Starscream out of his packaging. So what do we have? So we have Starscream, uh, an array of additional accessories which include some interchangeable missiles for his launchers, two hands which will attach to his robot mode, and we do have a miniature version of Megatron. Uh, which can also now be equipped in the hand. So back in my original version of G1 Starscream, uh, these couldn't hold anything. And we also have the manual. I'll leave it to the actual review component. This irks me. But we'll leave it till then. Um, manual. One second. Hold this thing out. So, Starscream does not come out of his packaging looking like that. A lot of his accessories, so the tail fins, some of his missiles, and his landing pad are not attached. So, you do have to attach them. And they are pretty much in the exact same way I used to remember them as well. And then, pretty much going through Starscream transformation process, it does recommend to detach everything. I don't think you really need to, but Depends on the person. And then going through the transformation, reattaching things in its different positioning. Now, once again, I actually don't know why, especially with the blue tail fins, why they even get taken off because they don't really move much. Reattach everything. And then weaponize Starscream. So you can change out the missiles to his more traditional null rays and he can also hold Megatron. That was a very quick look through the manual. 
Um, yes, very short and sweet back in the day. I will also admit, what is that? His head is... I don't know. I, I look at his head and it looks like it's a humanoid head like wearing a little eye visor or something. Anyway. Okay, star screen. So most of these accessories probably will come into play during the robot mode. So those will be his additional null rays, which will go into the missile launcher. Uh, his left and his right hands, which also do have a little section one to hold things into the base of Megatron's grip. And Megatron himself. I did notice this is also attachable. So this will go into the top of the hand. This will just attach elsewhere. In fact, you can probably actually attach it to the bottom of star screen. Well, his hand anyway. But we'll look at that again later. Star screen. Okay. So star screen from the top. Star screen from the bottom side. Front. the other side and a bit of a angled on. Now right off the bat we'll address the uh, elephant in the room. I always add this in at the very beginning. It's a vintage G1 retro toy. Time has not been kind on it. Let's just get that out there right now. Anyway, in terms of the colorings, I think they've actually done quite well at capturing Starscream's movie based colors. Um, he definitely has that uh, little stonewall grey primary colour. He does have his red where it needs to be. He has a bit of that blue as well. And to be honest, colours wise, I mean, especially if you're looking at the top, that actually does look like Starscream through and through. What used to be stickers have now been pretty much already pre-painted on, which actually does make things a lot easier. Um, I do remember the sticker sheet for this. It was a pain. Um, once we get to the robot mode, I'll explain more then. In terms of articulation, so the wheels that are on the uh, one, the landing strip, and two, the back of his feet here, um, are working wheels. They feel a little bit noisy, but that's okay. The cockpit uh, hatch will open. I usually put the landing gear in there back in the day, just to not lose it. Um, otherwise, in terms of other moving parts, so the wings will obviously move, but in terms of the actual alt mode, there's um, no real point for them to move. The joint itself obviously is to help with the transformation, uh, switch the wings around as they are needed. So overall, from an alt mode perspective, Star Spring is actually looking very, very cool. Um, I do like how he actually does look much more animation centric. Okay, so we'll leave that for the alt mode side of things, not too much more we can say about it. I will transform Starscream, then we can have a better look at his robot mode and how some of these other accessories look like on him. And after that, have some final thoughts. And with Starscream now in his robot mode. So here we have Starscream from the very front. And I will admit, the colours do go a long way. The toy may be 40 years old, but the colours do work. So Starscream from the front. Uh, Starscream from the side. The back. The other side. And then back to the front. And just a bit of a close-up on Starscream's torso and detail. Now, I will admit, back in the good old days, those eyes were stickers. They were not fun. I remember that very well. So what I've done with Starscream in his robot mode is I have attached his null ray missiles instead, instead of his cluster bombs, which I will say now, I suspect they've made this ridiculous length so they're not as bad as a choking hazard. It's my only best guess. 
Anyway, uh, I've also equipped Starscream with Megatron in hand as well. So colors wise, we definitely get to see a bit more of the red now that Starscream's in his robot mode. Uh, we, do, we also definitely get to see more of the blue as well. So as I mentioned not too long ago, the movie centric colors on the toy actually do look really, really nice. He does look very star screaming uh, from a color palette perspective, which is always a good thing. Uh, in terms of articulation, well, his head definitely won't move in the traditional sense, which is fine. Uh, his arm can move all the way to the front. I should probably also not point a missile at my face, but let's not worry about that too much. Um, if I move this around, uh, arm can go... In fact, if I just take this off, arm can pretty much do a full 360. Now, he's holding Megatron right now, so it does limit the full 360 of the arm, but that is very nice that he can do the full 360. Now, the null rays as well are also uh, movable as well, so some of the stock images have the null ray coming all the way up, but I like to try and keep it a bit more anime, more animation centric, have them pointed forward as they always do. Which does also make me wonder if this was a, like a later gimmick. I mean, you can also hold his um, blaster, well, his side weapons as they come. Now, since I know it's going to work, I'll just put my hand over here as well. And this will launch to work. So, that's always nice. Uh, probably helps when you reload it, not to have the, your finger on the button again. Um, that's pretty much the major articulation that Starscream will have. I mean, these, his feet will move up and down, but that's not because of articulation. That's just because of transformation. Similar with his wings, uh, because of what they're attached on. They can flip around and things like that, but once again, it's not so much for articulation purposes. Now, at the beginning of the video, he was standing. He still happily stands as well, so that's always a good thing. Um, and I will admit, he does look very cool being able to hold Megatron like that. Um, as for the accessories that aren't currently attached, so his landing gear, obvious reasons. Um, now you could still use the cluster bomb missiles if you wanted to, but to my point earlier about the length for the robot mode, I would just stick with the normal null rays and the base stock of Megatron is currently not attached. I did try attaching it to the bottom of the hand, but I wasn't having any luck, so maybe when I do the shorts I'll have a bit more luck then. So, Starscream, I'll just stand you back there and check him in. It's a shame that I don't have my little stand ready. Would have actually been nice to actually have you properly standing. Um, well, not standing, but leaning. Okay, so I guess um, some final thoughts about Starscream. So, since I have you in your robot mode right now, and we'll go in reverse, uh, from a robot mode perspective, once again, vintage retro G1 figure. Time has not been kind to it, let's not even pretend that's even going to be something to factor in. Um, your current generation of figures are obviously much more dramatically improved, studio series, movie lines, all sorts of things. So from that side of things, if you want something more current, um, studio series, War for Cybertron, etc. Um, all had some very nice iterations of Starscream. But going back to this particular vintage version, having the movie colours applied, I think, do go a long way. Doesn't necessarily make the figure any better, but from a visual perspective, it really just reinforces that this is Starscream. Through and through, um, 
because of just how all the colours combine and how just they very easily make him very recognisable. I will admit it is very nice that we have hands that can actually hold things for a change. That is very cool. Uh, definitely a bit of a change from the original release. The missiles are still the same, although I feel that they've changed the plastic on the null rays. Don't quote me, it has been a while. As for everything else, um, it's nice that you don't have to worry about stickers. Uh, where things have been pre-painted, they have been, and things like that. So from a robot mode, I think display-wise, he will look nice on a shelf, especially with the other two Seekers. And the other three if we get the rest of the cone heads. Uh, the transformation, it's very stock standard and easy. It's nothing overly complex. Um, I did detach these little tail fin components, because you actually do need to. But the blue tail fins I kept attached, and the wings I just flipped them over to accommodate getting the arms out of the central block and things like that. So transformation is definitely not too bad. Um, he's still a bit of a weird parts type former, especially with the hands, but it is what it is. Um, the ultimate I'd probably say is probably done the best in terms of surviving the times. Plus, with the movie colors applied, that alone actually does look really, really good for style screen. I think that's probably the most um, authentic part of the figure that you'll get with his old mode compared to his robot mode. But overall, both are still very nice. Would I recommend this vintage version of style screen? Well, if you never picked up style screen back in the day, I would say yes. Even for me, who is someone who was able to pick one up, although in saying that, my G1 Starscream is probably in a complete state of disrepair. Um, it is actually nice to have a fresh new copy in movie colours with some of the latest modernisations uh, for the collection. So if you never had them, now's a good time. If you did have them but want a more modernised take, now's a good time. Uh, for those who aren't a big fan of Starscream or you're a big fan of the G1 vintage stuff, then by all means you can probably give it a pass. He is still a bit of a pricey figure even now, so if you really don't feel like spending the money and want something a bit more modernised in terms of look, transformation, features, things like that, then yes, um, there are alternative Starscream figures out there that will clearly tick off some of the boxes for that. Mind you, they're going to be hard to find now because they've been released for some time. Um, but yes, I think for this one, this particular version of Starscream, very much geared towards your very firm adult collectors because we've lived through this era um, and potentially some of the other collectors who just appreciate the vintage retro look and feel. When I say feel, he still has the very heavy die cast middle section as well, which I think is very, very cool. So yes, for me, I'm glad I have a new fresh take of Starscream. I'm glad I finally have a Thundercracker. I will get Skywarp when he is finally released. So for me, I'm appreciating the nostalgia of the G1 figure line. Plus to finally be in a position of saying, I now have the G1 versions of the three main Seekers. And as I said, I hope we get the cone heads. Because it will be nice to have Thrust, Ramjet, and Dirge. Because I can safely say, never had the full Seekers back in the day. This will hopefully be my very first time. At least for the G1 figures. Um, I already had my little nitpick about the cluster bombs, which is okay. Um, I don't think there's too much more to say about Starscream other than yeah if, if you really want to grab him grab him um, otherwise yeah he's definitely going to be a bit of an acquired taste given his vintage feel look and aesthetic thank you very much for watching this unboxing and reviews reviews unboxing and review video don't know where that came from of Transformers G1 Retro Starscream in his movie colours. 
feel free to leave a like or comment subscribe if you enjoyed the content all of this does help support the channel and i do greatly appreciate it extra content can be also found on my instagram account link is in the description below it's also the same handle as this channel and i will have a short of star screen uh, to complement this video as well with that being said stay safe take care and i will catch you all in a future video whether it's uh the next retro transformers video something else transformers related or just generally something else on the channel see ya